And Brent, thank you so much for your time today. And listen, this storm, I mean, we were all told we should prepare, cover our plants, despite the, the valiant efforts by so many people. A lot of folks out there have a lot of dead plants. So what's the first thing to do? That's right. So the first thing you want to do if you haven't done it already is you want to remove that mushy foliage that looks like um, dead, brown, decaying foliage. Very important to go ahead and get that off if you haven't already because what that does is it allows sunlight and air to get down to the center of the crown of the plant and that'll help facilitate regrowth and pre prevent any kind of other additional you know, fungal issues that might be going on. Okay, That's well what about what about plants that look like they've been like they're dead. So I have hibiscus or these foxtail, you impressed and I know the names. Um, it looks like there, there's no hope. I mean, what do we do with those? Yeah, look, they can look pretty bleak and desolate and it is okay to go ahead if you want to wait a little while just to give it a little bit longer. Some things, you know, like, like hibiscus, hamelia, things like that. Um, you can pretty much tell some of those are dead to the ground. You can go ahead and cut some of those back pretty far. If, if you want to be cautious and wait just a little bit longer, you can give it another two or three weeks. You might start seeing some little green buds appearing along the bottom of the stems, and that'll give you a really good indication of where to cut back to. But don't be afraid to cut them all the way back if needed? For, for certain things, yes. Some, some things, if you do want to wait a little while longer, it could keep you from, you know, prevent you from cutting back too far and cutting good growth. Like the oleanders you're showing there, those are probably a good bet that they're dead to the ground. Same for the hamelia that you're seeing, um, seeing us cut back here. They're doing what we call the scratch test. They were checking to see if there was any green underneath the bark. And if there is, then you could cut to that point. But for this one, we determined that it was dead pretty much to the ground. So they were going to go ahead and take that one down pretty low. What about palms? Because this is something I was driving through Midtown the other day, Brent, and I noticed mm -hmm. all these beautiful palm trees, birds of paradise, sago palms, right? The palm yeah. fronds look totally brown and dead. So is it safe to say as a general rule of thumb, if something is brown, no matter what type of plant it is, just cut it off, cut it back? It really depends. It's hard to give a blanket statement like that, especially on especially on palms. Um, there are certain ones that are pretty hardy. Some of the Washingtonias, the sable palms are pretty hardy. Pindo palms have proven pretty hardy. Other ones like your pygmy date palms, the queen palms, uh, they're, they're all going to look pretty brown right now as a general rule. And, it, and it's typically okay to go ahead and cut the leaves off, but I would hold off on digging things out like the pygmy date palms and queen palms. Sometimes those might take two or three months before they show any regrowth. So you do have to practice some patience if you don't want to possibly rip a plant out that's going to come back. It's a bit of a wait and see game, to be honest with you. I understand too. And what about grass? I know, you know, everybody on my street, the grass is, it looks completely dead. And then all of a sudden four houses down, somebody else's grass is totally green. So will that grass come back? So if it's green, most likely they overseed it with rye, which is a cool season grass. So the, the rye grass is perfectly fine. So what you're seeing that's brown is likely St. Augustine, Bermuda grass, or potentially uh, centipede grass. Um, don't see a lot of that here. Those are warm season grasses. They turn brown as a general rule in winter anyhow. And then uh, the, the hand mother nature delta a couple weeks ago made the grass really turn brown unless it's a cool season, but most of those should come back. Okay. And Brent, before we let you go, the Houston Botanic Garden, for uh, our viewers mm -hmm. who have not yet paid you a visit, you guys are located on the south side of the loop, just outside the loop, east of 45. It is such a treasure. Are you still welcoming the public? Absolutely. Yes, we um, we, we closed up only like for a day or so, just so we can work on some things, but we've been back open for two weeks. You know, we're actively cleaning up the gardens. There's still plenty of beautiful stuff for people to come see here. Our trails are open for walking, and, and we're already seeing signs of plants starting to regenerate new growth. So there's, there's plenty to come see. We welcome everybody to come out and see us. It's a beautiful space for sure. Brent Moon, thanks so mm -hmm. much for joining us today and great information mm -hmm. to share with everyone. And by the way, to connect with Brent, we do have a link on our HoustonLife.tv Facebook or uh, website page. Sorry. We sure do. All right, coming up, how a husband and